Why do we get so invested in Disney World snacks? Well, the easiest answer is because they're really good, but that's not always the case, is it? Sometimes these treats develop a backstory. They come, they go, they return, they leave again. And we're always wondering why. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today I'm talking about the snacks Disney World had to stop selling. Keeping up with Disney World snack drama can feel like a soap opera, and figuring out what really happened is sometimes a full-time job. So let's figure out what actually happened with some of these snack-based items. First up, plastic cheese. Before you ask, yes, this was traumatizing for me as a person. Disney stripped my beloved plastic cheese, or as most people call it, hot cheese sauce, from all their restaurants. No longer could I go up to counter service locations like Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe, Pecos Bills, and Casey's Corner to help myself to that liquid gold. Now, there were rumors about what happened here. Some cast members said that the self-service plastic cheese was getting to be more of a hassle and a mess than it was worth. But other rumors stated that the missing cheese had to do with a lawsuit that a family filed against Disney after their child was severely burned by the hot cheese sauce. Whatever the case, the plastic cheese sauce went dormant for a couple of years before finally making its big return in 2017. That being said, plastic cheese is no longer a self-service option. It's now an extra charge at many counter service restaurants and snack kiosks. If you want to order this magical golden goodness, you can find the plastic cheese at Casey's Corner to go alongside your corn dog nuggies. Fryer's Nook, if you're looking to add some cheesy goodness to your side of tots, Backlot Express, because cheesy fries are the best fries, Cosmic Ray Starlight Cafe, and many snack carts around the parks. We've got a whole treatise on plastic cheese on Disney Food Blog that'll tell you where you can get it right now. By the way, before you ask, I call it plastic cheese because I'm pretty sure there's no actual food in there. Number two is Pog Juice. Passion fruit, orange, guava, put it all together, what do you get? Pog Juice. You may know it better as jungle juice or lily koi juice. They call it different things depending on where you get it in Disney World, but it's always the same stuff. Now, a couple months back, Pog Juice began quietly disappearing from our lives due to a supply shortage. It was questionable when or if the fruity concoction would return to restaurants, and so the quest was on. The DFB team searched for Pog Juice in a desperate attempt to see if any Disney World locations were still serving it. Time and again, they came up dry, literally, until mid-August when they stumbled on a Pog-based cocktail, the new Rita at the Barefoot Pool Bar in the Polynesian Village Resort. This became the case for several restaurants that had once sold Pog Juice. Pog Juice was still available, but only as an additional ingredient in specialty cocktails. At the beginning of September, however, Pog Juice made its valiant return. Once upon a time, Disney used Minute Maid Coca-Cola as their Pog supplier, but when the supply shortage happened, they switched over to Nestle to save the day. Now Pog is abundant enough that the Polynesian was able to give free Pog samples on Disney's 50th anniversary. So happy ending all around. Now, if you want to welcome Pog back home, you can go back to its old stomping grounds around the restaurants and bars around Disney's Animal Kingdom and the Polynesian Village Resort. Okay, number three, we're gonna talk condiments. Now this isn't really a snack, plastic cheese really isn't either for most people, but I feel like this other shortage needs to be mentioned because it's happened multiple times at numerous restaurants. Back in 2019, Casey's Corner experienced a massive shortage of ketchup, mustard, and mayo that went on for a whopping three days before the packets were replenished and we could dress up our dogs again in tomatoey mustardy deliciousness. Now when the parks reopened after the 2020 closure, the condiments shortage returned. To help prevent the spread of germs, Disney World opted to remove self-service condiment stations and ketchup bottles on the restaurant tables. Instead, restaurants handed out single-use ketchup packets, which seemed like a great alternative, but the Heinz Company was having a hard time keeping up with Disney's high demand of these packets. The shortage has curbed for now, meaning you can find these single-serve condiment packets at many quick-service locations that serve up burgers, hot dogs, and other sandwich-based items, such as Animal Kingdom's Restaurantosaurus, Magic Kingdom's Columbia Harbor House, and of course, Casey's Corner. But for a while there, we had to use Hunt and it was difficult. Number four is that sad pumpkin pretzel. Bless its heart, it had the right idea but the wrong execution. So back in 2019, Animal Kingdom's Thirsty River Bar and Trek Snacks released a seasonal pumpkin pretzel, which was dipped in orange icing and dusted with pumpkin spice. Now, the way this pretzel was advertised made it look super cute, like a pumpkin, which seemed very fitting. However, when we ordered it, we received something that looked less pumpkin-y and more 
I don't know, monstrous. It was a snack so ugly, even its parents wouldn't love it. Now the icing was clumpy and looked more like curdling plastic cheese rather than pretty orange icing. And the little candy leaves just slapped on the side like an afterthought. Basically what happened is the pretzel was still too hot for the icing and it just was melting off. Now we felt sorry for it. We decided to give the snack a second chance later on in the day and then again the following week just to see if it was a fluke design flaw. And the second one we got was drowning in the cheese looking icing. It looked like someone needed to put it out of its misery. Now, like I said, we went back for a third time the next week to discover that it had vanished. The pumpkin pretzel was gone, which is a shame because the pretzel itself was actually really good and had a nice pumpkin spice filling. A few days later, the pretzel returned to redeem itself, and although it looked a little better, the end product still failed to mirror what was being advertised. Now, since then, the team and I haven't seen the pumpkin pretzel make a return, but every fall, we cross our fingers and hope that it will come back. I fill the pumpkin pretzel void by enjoying other pretzel delicacies around the parks like the cheddar jalapeno pretzel. That's the vagabond of the pretzel world and it jumps between snack locations, but it's most often found at the Pretzel Palooza kiosk in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Like I said before, it tends to wander, so it may not be available during your vacation. Never hurts to check though. And the warm cream cheese stuffed pretzel sings a similar tune, often hopping from one snack location to the next, but we've sometimes spotted it over at Magic Kingdom's Lunching Pad in Tomorrowland and sometimes at Cheshire Cafe too. Now, Disneyland has entered into the pumpkin pretzel arena this year. They have a cream cheese stuffed pumpkin pretzel with pumpkin dust on top and it is really really good execution perfection so if you are in Disneyland or around Disneyland grab that this season all right number five on our list of course we're going to talk about the poop candy and the award for the most unsavory looking snack goes to this in 2015 Zuri Sweets shop in Animal Kingdom sold match the species poop candy I have a lot of jokes attached to this concept but I'm biting my tongue because this is a family appropriate channel now there were a handful of different poops you could choose from. The elephant poop was made with chocolate peanut butter fudge, sweet rolled oats, and yellow coconut flakes. The giraffe poop had chocolate fudge brownie and caramel. The cotton top tamarind poop used peanut butter fudge, sweet rolled oat flakes, and chocolate pretzel pearls. And the hippo poop was made with chocolate fudge caramel brownie with peanut butter and rolled oats. Once again, we were subjected to eating something that looked much worse than it tasted, and the flavors were actually really good, very sweet. It was excellent poop candy. Now, the candy came with mixed reviews. Some guests found the concept hysterical and some found it a little too unsavory. In the end, poop candy had a very short lifespan at Zuri's. Once it sold out, Disney retired the controversial treat. But Zuri's sweet shop still continues to provide unique treats like animal-inspired caramel apples, marshmallow pops, cake pops, and seasonal treats that you can check out the next time you're at Animal Kingdom. Okay, I have to move on to the next point now. I've said poop way too many times for a snack-based video. Number six is McDonald's fries. Once upon a time, Disney World sold Mickey D's fries in their parks. Do you guys remember? I know some of you remember. Which parks? Every park. If you want to learn about all the different specific locations you could find them, you can check out my video exploring the 15 Disney World restaurants that had to close and why. But what you need to know for now, for the context of this video, is that McDonald's fries and Disney quick service locations were the best of friends for many, many years. Ten years to be exact. After having sponsored the Disney World parks for over a decade, the Disney World McDonald's contract expired and the partnership kind of fizzled out in 2008. But don't be blue, you can still order McDonald's fries in the Disney bubble. There's an entire McDonald's located at the intersection of Osceola Parkway and West Buena Vista Drive, which is fairly close to Disney's all-star resorts and Animal Kingdom Lodge. Or you can nosh on some fries right in the Disney parks. Some of my favorite fry places are the Daily Poutine over at Disney Springs, which features a nice variety of classic and unique poutine concoctions. Mr. Kamal's at Animal Kingdom, that has Mr. Kamal's seasoned fries, served with curried honey and Korean chili ketchup dipping sauces, and Flame Tree Barbecue at Animal Kingdom with pulled pork fries and that all-famous plastic cheese. All right, number seven, let's talk about peanut butter. This happened back in 2015. Ghirardelli Ice Cream and Chocolate Shop located in Disney Springs completely stopped using peanut butter-based ingredients in their desserts. And this was in a spur of the moment decision on Ghirardelli's part. In 2013, the ice cream company started working on peanut-free desserts to become more allergy-friendly for guests. And at first, this didn't impact already existing sundaes in the Ghirardelli shop. But after a couple of years, sundaes like the Gold Rush that had marvelous melted peanut butter swirled in with vanilla ice cream and hot fudge became obsolete. 
So where are you going to get now? Well, Ghirardelli has a strike it rich butterscotch hot fudge sundae that's made with vanilla ice cream, sea salt, diced almonds, caramel sauce, and whipped cream. And it's topped with a white chocolate caramel Ghirardelli square, which is a nice added touch. They've also got their ocean beach sea salt caramel sundae and their world famous hot fudge sundae. If you're looking for some a little more on the traditional side, all of these are delicious. But if you are a big peanut butter fan and you don't have someone in your family who is going to be affected by that with a peanut allergy, not to worry. Not all peanut butter sauce has been nixed from Disney World ice cream. Over at Beaches and Cream and Disney's Beach Club Resort, you can order the No Way Jose, which is described on the menu as a peanut butter and hot fudge delight, and made even more delightful with the additional peanut butter morsels. And the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor at Magic Kingdom also satisfies that peanut butter ice cream fantasy with the Mickey Ears Bowl Sunday. You can customize this Sunday with your choice of ice cream and topping, and one of those toppings just happens to be peanut butter sauce. Now, sadly, we have not seen the All-American Sunday, which is one of our favorite peanut butter sundays at the Plaza Ice Cream parlor return since the plaza reopened but like we said you can customize your own that's basically the same thing for an extra 69 cents you can also add a side cup of peanut butter sauce to pour over any ice cream of your choosing all right number eight on our list docking bay seven sporks okay this isn't a snack but let's talk about it anyway because it's a wild story when docking bay seven opened back in 2019 along with the rest of star wars galaxy's edge you could eat your quick service meal with a spork now i know what you're thinking wow aj really a spork that's incredible but wait it gets better it was a metal space looking spork. Fans and guests alike were a little too thrilled with these Batu based utensils, and it seems like some folks were heavily influenced by the smugglers part of Smuggler's Run and took it to practice. So after Disney started noticing their metal spork supply was dwindling, they stopped handing the utensils out for use, and this is why we can't have nice things. But that wasn't the end of the space spork story. The sporks returned to Docking Bay 7, but this time at a price. Guests could purchase these sporks for $10.99. Each spork came in its own Batu to travel bag, double prize. All you had to do was access the Docking Bay 7 mobile order section of your My Disney Experience app and tap on the cargo option to add it to your purchase. Currently, the sporks are no longer available for purchase, but that doesn't mean Disney won't bring them back again for future travelers. In the meantime, you can purchase other Batu-themed merchandise at the Galaxy's Edge gift shops like Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities and the Black Spire Outpost Market. So, did you enjoy this soap opera journey filled with loss and laughs and in some cases revival? Disney World menus change constantly. As you know, we tell you the only consistent thing about Disney World restaurants is that they're inconsistent. But you can always keep up with the trends by signing up for the DFB newsletter. Every week, we drop you an update about what's going on with the wonderful world of Disney snacks and menus and price increases and updates, as well as telling you about the latest tips, tricks, and discounts to help make your Disney vacation a little less like a soap opera with unexpected plot twists and more like a fairy tale that can save you money. I'm sure there's a fairy tale out there with a frugal happily ever after right so as always we thank you for listening and we thank you for watching and although this one was kind of fun and entertaining we snuck in some tips as well as always this is aj for disney food vlog and we'll see you real soon